So I want to say to all of our um, people on Facebook and to anybody who watches later, welcome to all of you. We're so glad to have you join us and to everyone who's on this Zoom meeting. Kulanu supports isolated, emerging, and returning Jewish communities around the world. Um, we've been doing this for 26 years now, since 1994. And um, we are supported by uh, volunteers and donors from around the world who, who support in many, many ways, but we're a primarily volunteer organization. Um, We'd like to share a short video that gives you the idea of the range of communities that we work with. Molly, yes. Yisrael, I'm Yisrael. Yisrael, I'm Yisrael. Yisrael, I'm Yisrael. I'm Yisrael. I'm Yisrael. I'm Yisrael. I'm Yisrael. Okay, so now um, this is the 14th event in our online speaker series that we began last um, April, soon after the pandemic started. And it's for us one of the silver linings of the pandemic, as terrible as that is, um, in that we've been able to be together and to hear from um, both people in our communities and um, scholars and others that work with our, in our field. Um, we, today is Giving Tuesday, and we'll come back to that later, but it's a special day for inviting you to support our work. Um, we want to thank the sponsors who sponsored today's event. Um, Molly will post the picture. We want to thank uh, R Ruth er Errol Carr, Margie Katz, Lily Kaufman, Sarah Merrill Cott, Deborah and Ron Plotkin, Joy Sandler, and Barbara Stone for your support on Giving Tuesday. Um, we like to poll our audience for how you heard, heard about this event. So you'll be getting a poll in a second and please quickly respond. Um, many of you have already heard that we're going to be having a special Hanukkah benefit concert, um, both on Tuesday, uh, December 15th at 8 p.m. and on Thursday, December 17th at 1 p.m. These are both Eastern times. You need to calculate what that is for you. Um, and here is a short, uh, Molly, can I do the promotion now even though we've got the poll going? Okay, so then we're gonna have a little promotion just telling you about you know, giving a flavor of Hanukkah in our communities. Fanya 
sawa ndio imefika naomba nyinyi usiregeye mungu babari wacha okay so the the Hanukkah benefit concert we're also calling a zoomathon and you can read more about it at kulano.org slash zoomathon uh, Molly perhaps you could put that in the chat um, and we're inviting congregations to be uh, um, community part congregations and other organizations to be community partners with us and we have a lot of groups already signed up as you'll see on that page but if you have a a, an organization or congregation that would like to partner with us, all a partner organization needs to do is, is um, publicize the event to, to your mailing list. Um, and so we're, we'd love to have you uh, join us in that. <clears throat> this program is about um, our work and Joni Levine's work with the Abiyadaya uh, Jewish community in Uganda. In case there's anyone here who doesn't know the, the group already, uh, we're proud to say that they are now, last year they celebrated their 100th anniversary as a Jewish community. They are Jews by choice. They don't claim to be lost tribes or to descend from Jews from long ago. Um, and, but they are one of the first groups that Kulana worked with. We started about 25 years ago, or 26 years ago by now. And, um, and, and it's been a wonderful partnership. The, the community, anyone who visits the community or hears a speaker or gets to know them or listens to their music is inspired by their uh, spiritual passion and their music. Um, and and their, their, their warmth as a, as a community to visit. Um, there are by now about 15 different Abiyadaya synagogues in perhaps um, 12 different locations, including one in Kenya, three in Kampala, and, and many different villages. We will be hearing today from people in four different villages, um, Namatumba, Apach, uh, the KKSY community in, um, located in Asenyi, and Nabagoya. And um, for, the, the program will be in four parts. Each, for each part, we'll have um, e either a video or a slideshow, uh, a, a brief introduction from J Joni Levine, and then we'll have people from the community and who are the stars of the, of the films or slideshows um, answering questions. Um, we'll, we'll keep the questions, just a few questions after each segment, and then at the very end, we will have breakout groups if we have time, and we will have more questions. Um, we usually try to run these programs for an hour and then breakout groups. And of course, we understand some people have to leave after an hour, um, but this one may take a little longer if you have time to stay. Um, so now I'd love to introduce Joni Levine, one of our wonderful um, allies and, and partners to Kulanu. Joni Levine is the treasurer of Panay Or of Portland, Oregon, um, Panay Or of Portland, Oregon's Tikkun Alum Committee, and she manages their Abiyadaya Fund, which supports the education of 30 students, mostly orphans, and works with other organizations like Kulanu and Kandra's Assembly on special projects. Joni, her husband Yehuda Winter, and and my husband and I first met on Nabagoya Hill in Uganda in 2012. We stayed together in the guest house. No, actually they stayed next door. The two were offering compassionate listening trainings to anyone in the community interested after having spent a month facilitating training in compassionate listening in Rwanda. They met with all the teenagers attending in the Abiyadaya Youth Association weekend with the rabbi study group, um, with counselors of Rain Uganda and with several other groups. I remember joining Joni uh, with a women's group as she taught circle dances that sometimes drew in children from surrounding homes. In 2018, Joni and her friend Lauren Mallon, a Canadian journalist who volunteered in 2009 with the Abiyadaya, sent Susan Nakomiza, a nurse from the Namatumba Abiyadaya village, 
to be trained by Days for Girls Uganda in their Entrepreneur Launchpad program. And then they helped her start Namatumba Days for Girls. Joni will be sharing with us several video and slideshows fo focused on such entrepreneur projects she has developed <clears throat> in partnership with Kulano and other sponsors. Okay, um, please write any questions in the chat. I'll hand this over to Joni. You need to unmute yourself, Joni. Yeah, there I go. Okay. Hi, everybody. It's wonderful that there are so many people here today and so many people who I know who I haven't seen for a really long time. Um, my first introduction to the Abudaya and to the idea of providing reusable sanitary pads came when our friend Lauren Mallon returned from volunteering at Atassa Primary School in 2010. He asked me to help him raise funds to provide the older girls with Afri pads, which we successfully did. Lauren continued this project for several years. Then two years ago, I saw that the group World Dance for Humanity was sending several Rwandan women to be trained in the Ugandan branch of Days for Girls in a program Harriet mentioned, Entrepreneur Launchpad, in which they would learn to sew and sell reusable pads, make soap, and learn about health education to become health ambassadors. What better way to assist all the Abudaya girls and women in this aspect of their lives than to train their own to instruct them. I asked Susan Nakumiza, who's a nurse, um, and I personally met her in 2012, if she was interested and she said yes. So Lauren and I again raised funds together to send Susan and a friend to the training. We also raised enough money for them to open up their shop in Namutumba. I heard from Days for Girls that Susan was the best student in her program, and they were excited that with her nursing background, she would be a great health ambassador. So we were encouraged to pursue health education workshops. This is where I approached Kulanu to see if they might find someone to support the very first workshops. Harriet called Janet Lipsy, who agreed to help our startup, and Days for Girls sent one of their trainers to assist. Plus, Kulanu provided the business with a computer and smartphone that takes great photos and videos, which you will see. We are so appreciative of both Harriet and Janet to trust us in this very early stage of development. Janet has continued to pitch in when we have needed it the most, and we are truly grateful to her. So the video you will now see highlights how Namutumba Days for Girls has developed into a top-notch team. They have been awarded gold standard for their pads by Days for Girls. 700 girls and women have received trainings in eight different villages, three interfaith schools, and one interfaith women's savings group. Um, after, so I'm going to introduce right now Susan Nakumiza, owner of Days for Girls, Zaituna, a midwife, and Sarah Atai, head seamstress, who work together as health education teams with us today. For the Ugandans, it's late evening, so we are grateful you have all made this effort to join us. So Susan and Zaituna, say hello. Hello to everyone. Hi, are you hearing me? Yes, yes, it's great. Hi. And Zaituna, say hi as well. Hi to everyone. My name hi. is Zaitun, a midwife. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful that you're here. And I think Sarah Atai is here as well. Sarah, would you unmute yourself and say hi? I haven't seen her yet. Maybe not. Maybe she hasn't arrived yet. Maybe she'll arrive at some point. But uh, Sarah Atai is the head seamstress and one of their great team. So um, yeah, so again, after the video, you will hear more, you know, we'll answer some questions. 
and Molly's about to start. See you anytime. <laughs> we are very glad to give us our package. It's money package. The money to give us sanitary pads, which can help to maintain us our hairs and to be clean at a school we thank mama joan for what you have done and your people whom you work with we are so 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 grateful thanks for this great opportunity that you have brought to national synagogue Every girl, every woman, everyone is they are not so singing. happy and ready to use this card. Thanks so much. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Is a man. The Lord, hallelujah. 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 Shiru, shiru, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are so, so happy for what they are doing for us. And really, as we received, may God bless all who, who supported us. Thanks a lot. So fast, put and we shall see. Okay, so if you have any questions that you would like to ask, please put them in the chat. And um, meanwhile, let's hear from, I think um, Sarah Tai is Let's now with us. Yeah, so Sarah, hi. Yes. Hi. So, yes, I'm the one, hi. Hi, so how about if- um, Hi, how are you? We're doing well. So tell us a bit about yourself and how, what you do with um, Namutumba Days for Girls, Sarah. Sarah? Yes, uh, thank you so much for today. Thank you for meeting. Are you getting me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Are you getting me right? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you so much, Mama Joanne. 
Thank you for the opportunity you have given me today again. I'm so grateful to, to see all of you online. I'm Sarah Atai. I'm the Chief Sewist in Namtumba, Days for Girls Enterprise. Thank you. Great. So there is a question here. Um, why are sanitary pads important? Um, Susan, do you wanna tell us? Yeah, I yes, can. Uh, the so why, why are sanitary pads important to women in Uganda? Yeah, sanitary pads are important in Uganda. Most stories so about sanitary pads in that can you hear me yes yes keep talking okay yeah <laughs> sanitary pads are very important in uganda in that first of all reusable sanitary pads are cheap to, uh, to be afforded they are comfortable they are easily they can be easily to assist in that even a local woman or a local girl in the village can get a material and make it by by herself. And then reusable sanitary pads, when used well, they are free from infection is because they don't contain any chemical. They are just clothes. Great, thank you. So there's another question about masks being sold in communities. Masks are sold all over Uganda because they're required. Um, so uh, somebody else for cleanliness, for girls' self-confidence. Girls don't have to leave school or work when they have a period. So that's somebody um, telling us about that. And um, how do they benefit girls in school? Zaytuna, would you tell us about that? Yeah, thank you very much. I take this opportunity. These pads have benefited girls a lot in that it is helping them to keep them in schools because these girls can buy these pads and as we said, they can last long up to three years and above. So when these girls have these pads, they can keep on using them. Whenever they go to their periods and they're at school, they can pack it them well, and they go with them to school, so they will always be at school. Thank you. Great. So, um, what are the pads made of, and how do they get the material? Um, Sarah, Atai, do you want to answer that one? Uh, for we as days for girls enterprise Namutumba. Uh, we always uh, purchase the material from the headquarters Kampala uh, because we cannot afford to get them right now in Namutumba. So we go to the, uh, the main enterprise Kampala, that's where we get the material from. So we get the material from there, then we bring this way and we make from our enterprise. What is the material made yeah. of? What is the material? cotton right yeah i can help sarah sarah the quality of the material. I can't. you can't hear so um i can't hear well okay susan tell more about the the, the layers of the material okay the materials we use like for the shield we use PV, that is Forista and Forista Plus, some other material. Then with the liners, we use the fabrics which are 100% cotton. The, the flannels, we use cotton 100%. Then inside the shield, we always put there the Macintosh, the plastic Macintosh, which prevents leakage. Then, so at, at first we used to use on the pockets, those wings there, 
but there are some pockets where we insert the liners. We used to use the kitang material, which is also cotton. Okay, thank you so much. So we'll come back to the other questions at the end if we have time, but we need to move on to our next presentation, which is um, we're going to learn about a women's project Kulanu recently supported in the Orthodox Abudaya village called KKSY. So please put any questions in the chat about that. And before we um, begin, um, Aaron Mazo is with us and he will answer questions afterwards. So begin the slide. Oh, okay. So um, this is um, Kulanu supports Kahal Kadosh Erit Yisrael Village, Uganda, women's COVID-19 mask business by providing fabric and accessories, measuring tape, scissors, needles, elastic thread, and sewing machine lubricating oil to help the women succeed. In February 2020, 24 women, 14 Jewish, 5 Christians, 5 Muslim, were gifted with pedal sewing machines by the young members of the Greenfield and Kaplan families through this, the assistance of Innovation Africa. The KKSY women danced with joy and appreciation for receiving these amazing gifts. <laughs> Chairman's wife is a trained seamstress and so gave lessons to the group on how to use their new pedal sewing machines. Several of the women learned quickly, bought material and started sewing. Then took up sewing masks once there was a country mandate to wear them. <laughs> Yeah. When the sun on the floor, Okay, come from because I think some we wrote order and I'll Oh, no, no, Mezo, chairman of KKSY, requested help to provide all 24 women with fabric and accessories to boost the village mask making business. Here are photos of the women receiving this assistance in August 2020.
Hovesh Katula helped organize the project and took many of these photos. Here's some KKSY mask making cooperative facts. Some women can sew a mask in 20 minutes. Masks sell for 1,500 Ugandan shillings or 41 cents each. Each woman sews from five to 10 masks per day. The treasurer collects the money and keeps records, distributes earnings. At first, the masks were sold at one shop in Mbale, the main city near the village. But in November 2020, Innovation Africa helped the group open up their own shop. So the women very much thank Kulanu for helping them receive vital sewing tools to move their business forward. So we have with us today, Erin Mazo. Erin um, Mazo uh, has been in the army, been a counselor, studied procurement, and is now happily a farmer and chairman of KKSY. Our Pineor student funds helped a brilliant young woman from its village become a lawyer who now has a job as a legal advisor with Uganda Motors. Erin will answer any questions that you might have. Um, let's see. Oh, so people are still, uh, there are questions about the pads. Anyone have a question about the mask? Um, Aaron, hi. Say something um, about the Hello. Hi, would you just tell us a bit about the actual project and what's happening now with the Yes, hello. Hello, Mama Joan. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm okay and well done for today's work. Yeah. So what about the new shop? How is it working out? Everything is being going smoothly. Yeah. So are the, are the women just focusing on making masks or doing other things? Okay, right now women are, are making masks and uh, for the past, they've made masks and they've sold off some of the masks and they've made some of their savings. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hi, we can hear you. You have to just, where's the shop loca located in Mbale? Somebody just asked. Whoops, I think we got um, frozen here. Well, you know, I think, um, thank you. We're gonna go on to the next um, slide. Um, and the next slideshow is, is about um, the remote village of, of Apache. That's our third presentation. Um, and the farmers are developing a project called Apache Agricultural for Life, which is focused on moving them from subsistence to commercial farming. Um, again, please put your questions in the chat. Okay, fine. So Kulanu projects in Apache, highlighting the women of Apache. About Apache. Apache is the most remote of the Abiyudaya villages with 25 families totaling um, 159 people who run 40 farms. All live in thatch roofed homes with no electricity, wells, or holding tanks. They get their water from local streams plus rain fall for their crops. Kulanu, in conjunction with the Cantor's Assembly, has provided Apache a grant to survey their farms and set up a farmer savings and credit cooperative called a SACO. The survey indicated among many things that farmers now borrow funds and pay 100% interest to lenders, which leaves them with little profit. Once completed, their own SACO will provide them loans at very low interest. Kulanu provided the village funds for celebrating Sukkot. Kulanu also gave Yaakov and Rachel a phone plus funds for data usage for several members' phones during the survey. 
Kulano also asked Innovation Africa, Africa to consider providing a patch with a solar charging station. The Ugandan project manager has visited and will revisit in 2021 to decide what projects will be funded. Innovation Africa focuses on water and solar. And that's a photo of the Apache Synagogue. Here are Apache villagers, the village meeting with Innovation Africa and Yaakov Awani um, showing prayer books. What is a SACO? It is a legal savings and credit cooperative that has a constitution, bylaws, board of directors must conduct meetings, keep records. The SACO can operate as a business and add on members. Farmers need loans for planting season and can pay back after harvest and sales. Members are legally bound to repay their loans. The co-op grows from the interest paid by members. Apache women farmers. All family members work on Apache farms, so all the wives and children are included. Of the 40 farms, six are run by single women. Here are photos of several of these women taken by Israel Oruk when Michael Musenzi, a young agronomist from Namitumba, surveyed all the farms. So this is Ruth Etten showing the agronomist Michael Musenzi her sunflowers. Here's Rebecca Allen, Rivka Allen, Tehila Adobo's family farm, Rachel Adongo, and Hannah Akello received a lesson on proper drying of seed from Michael Musenzi. Soap making project. Namutoma Days for Girls conducted a women's health education workshop in Apache in January 2020, after which the women requested assistance to start their own soap business. They started this enterprise, but it was cut short by COVID-19 lockdown in March. Um, and they want to pick this up again. Um, the women of Apache, however, are just this past week learning to style hair. And um, they're learning from a non Abudaya woman who um, has studied hairdressing. And they're wanting to really learn and start doing hair themselves. What next for Apache? We will complete the SACO. Innovation Africa will decide on projects they will fund. Further funding is required for purchase of oxen and plows and setting up a demonstration garden. The community is seeking funding to establish their new Ben David Primary School. Words of gratitude. Finally, here are words of gratitude expressed by Israel Oruk's grandmother when she received food and soap distributed by the Cantor's Assembly after the COVID-19. Hi, Ami noticed that this saying at 100. I had just signed up for the 1,000. Um, Harriet, we can hear you. I'm not quite a Johnny. Your computer is sideways. Oh, that's a shame. Um, it is of many people's effort that I do receive these needs for myself. Therefore, may my words of thanks and prayers be fulfilled as soon as possible. Israel, my grandson, make sure my words are fully broadcast to the ears of your donors. Ha. Ah. So the joys of sharing videos, <laughs> transferring it from Keynote to uh, PowerPoint changed some of these. All of these were really perfect on my screen, but sorry for that. Um, so we have several um, people from Apache with us. Um, hopefully, um, Yaakov and, and Rachel, are you with us? Can you unmute yourselves and say hi? Can they see us? Yakov and Rachel? Yes, yes please. Hi, say 
hi to all um, of us. Introduce yourselves, please. Yes, please. You speak fast. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi, Rachel. Um, say something about the projects that we've been doing. Yeah, hi, I'm Rachel from Apache, a Mayadaya community in Northern Uganda. And near me, I have my husband, Mr. So, Jacob. So, so Rachel, so at, yes. push up your screen a little bit so we can see you. Like I'll this? The bottom. There yeah. you go, much better. Yes. Okay, begin speaking, you're great, that's wonderful. So I was saying, I am a women representative of a patch in the Women Association. And I serve as a, a women representative, as well as a teacher in a new school called Ben David, which is opened near my synagogue here. Um, I appreciate the Kulano people uh, for all the great projects that they have done to our community and which are others are still in plan, I do appreciate. Thank you. Wonderful. And Yaakov, say a, say a few words to us. Hi, members. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to be part of this meeting, which has given us an opportunity to have a face-to-face -face interaction with our friends <coughs> and others from U.S. Uh, so how, my, yeah. how far is a patch from Mbale? Uh, probably 300 kilometers. A distance of 300 kilometers. Uh-huh, uh-huh. How long does it take to travel? Mm, if you are using a private uh, a private car, you can take something like a four hours drive. Uh -huh. okay, but if you are using public, then it will take like six hours. Long, long trip. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very long. This is about 186 miles. Okay. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. So how about Ruth? Ruth is with us as well. Ruth Angam, would you say hi? Can you unmute yourself and say hi? Is Ruth still with us? Maybe not. Ah. Ruth is here, she just needs to unmute herself to speak. Oh, okay. Ruth, please unmute yourself. It's okay, I can unmute myself. Oh, wonderful. Just say hi to everybody. Hi to everybody. <laughs> and to Tell us a little bit about the young women doing um, their hair. Pardon? Tell us about the young women doing their hair. Okay. Thank you again for giving me this opportunity for the second meeting. It has been so nice yesterday. I think today it will be the same. So with women doing their hair, like this is November. And most of the hair are not like theirs. Well, what I know with the hair, well, okay, Ruth, it has a difficult um, connection. It's hard. Um, this is the first time all these people are on Zoom. So it's quite the experience for all of us. Um, okay. But there, Ruth was telling me that the young girls are learning to do hair from a non uh, woman. And um, they're wanting to really start doing other people's hair. So that's sort of a fun thing. And, um, but we need to go on to our final presentation. Um, and this one is particular to um, uh, Pineor of Portland to Kuno Lum Committee, we have several projects we are proud of. We just completed setting up a SACO in Nabugoya, 
and have helped several students set up small businesses during this period of school lockdown. Um, again, please put your questions in the chat as I show you several videos of women entrepreneurs from Nabugoya Village and speak about two shops just started by students in Namutumba. So um, again, this is called the Pineor of Portland, Oregon, Abudaya Fund Entrepreneurs. We're focusing on the Nabugoya SACO grant um, to women and young women businesses in Namutumba. Nabugoya Village, under the guidance of Musa Munyalo, um, received anonymous funding to create a SACO for 30 members, mixed business people and farmers. This SACO is complete. The group has opened up its own office and has already enrolled 20 more members into the cooperative. The SACO has awarded loans to 15 entrepreneurs, including four women. Two are tailors who receive sewing machines, accessories, and funds to rent a shop. Um, in this first video, Musa Manyalo interviews Miriam Kasakia at her new shop. And again, you have to turn your computer or your phone on its side to watch this, unfortunately. No, maybe not. Okay, maybe it's, sorry. Right. So the, this is, uh, each is 7,000. Mm. What's, how much? Yeah, that's can that's nice. Yeah, the phone part. I want to fit in. Make a little fit in game. This one, yeah. To me, it seems you make a lot of money. Don't <laughs> don't. If so, you you can be a rich lady because I see you're really operating. Yeah. So how make how much how many do you make a day like these ones? Yeah. So you make ten. You make ten. Even even twenty can. Eh. Because those ones that side that that side. I they can make even ten. Okay. So your capital is around the two. Two million. <laughs> so you're very rich. Do it, don't worry. You look to be rich. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, that's good. Rivka Nantumi now has a potato chip cooking business in Mbale. She received a loan of $138 plus $115 grant, so a total of $243. She rented space for the year, purchased her table, supplies, and an umbrella, which unfortunately was stolen during the recent election violence. Rivka is a single mother of five children, and um, three of her children are supported um, by our um, our donor funds um, who go to Adasa Primary School. Esther Kakai applied for a loan of $115 to open up her cafe. She says business has improved her life. She is proud to be Jewish and thanked us. She earns 8,000 Ugandan shillings per day, that's about $2.16, and saves 1,000 Ugandan shillings, or 27 cents, towards rent 
plus money to buy food to cook for the next day. She earns about $13 per week or about $52 per month, which is considered a basic subsistence wage in Uganda. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Yes, is a guy. Yes, is a guy. Sabida, 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 Sinavasikuvan. Eh, go so Twala <laughs> 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 Tano, tano, tano. I am The Nabagoya Group employed the services of an Mbale business expert. The board of directors decided to give a maximum of 450 to 500,000 Ugandan shillings, about $140, as a basic loan. Recently, the members jointly invested $70. Each member receives a passbook and a copy of their constitution. The co-op has official stamps and stationery. They currently seek $175 to purchase a used computer for their office. The fund that Paneora of Portland manages primarily supports student education. We currently actually have 23 students. We used to have 30, but a bunch of them graduated. Ugandan schools closed down in March 2020 because of COVID. So we purchased smartphones for our upper level students to continue their studies online, TVs or solar radios for families with younger students, study papers and books for many, food for the most needy. We worked with the Cantor's Assembly to provide food for all 15 Abudaya villages and communities. And I especially want to thank Cantor's Pamela Schiffer and Mike Weiss for our wonderful collaboration in providing this food. And plus, we provided food for the Namutumba for Girls workers. October 15th, candidates, those in the highest grades at each school level, return to school and the rest will hopefully begin school in January 2021. Students wear masks and social distance at their schools. If you might be interested in becoming a student donor, please contact me. Our older students reported that they did not have enough to do and requested funds to open up small shops to sell hair and body products, chapatis, general goods, raise passion fruit, raise chickens. Of the girls, I suggested to Shira, um, a bright high school student, that she gather neighboring children together and teach them, which she is doing, so not a business, but a good use of her skills. Sarah Namulando, a college student, requested $280 to open up a clothing shop, including renting a store for a year, getting a sales license, and purchasing items to sell. Here's a video of her showing us her store.
with the closest five girls. Girls, women, they can come and buy and t shirts. This is what I'm doing. I welcome other support and I think I'm saving for more support. Thank you, Mama Joan. Great to get the winter. Currently, our most ambitious business project is providing Esther Mukabezi, graduate of a two-year hairdressing school, with her own hair saloon. Esther spent a year working at hair saloons in a larger town before returning to Namatumba. The shop will also offer hairdressing classes. Above our photos of the location of the shop, of Esther writing lists of necessary items to purchase, and of the room under construction. Susan Nakumiza and her husband are supervising the project. The cost will be about $2,000, which is um, a whole bunch more than any of the other projects that you've been um, listening to about. We're happy to invite prospective donors to contribute. So it's Giving Tuesday. So there are opportunities to contribute. Um, you can indicate Pene Orr on the Kulanu donation page, um, which Harriet will um, show you again. Um, it's uh, kulanu.org slash donate. And in particular, these are possibilities that um, we can contribute to. A potch needs two oxen and plow teams that cost $675 each. Um, there are three teams that are gonna be shared by the farmers. The Apache demonstration garden tools come to about 500, the seed 150. The Apache school basics, they're just gonna be opening in January is about $2,000. Nebogoya Sacco computer is 175. The clothing shop solar lighting costs 85. We haven't done that one yet. The Namotumba hair saloon, the sink is 35. The water heater, 45, and the water storage container, $50. So thank you. And we have with us Musa Munyalo and um, Sarah Namulondo. So Sarah Namulondo, would you say hi? Hi. Hi. Can so, you get me? Yeah, we can hear you, Sarah. So tell us a bit, how's the shop doing? Yeah, I'll give him this chance again, like today. The shop is doing that you saw a few notices to run up a business. I'm having some few consults, just customer new different from different communities. I've been used to work with the now I'm associating with different communities and regions. I do thank your support. The community bless you, Mama Joa. Very happy for that. Okay, you know, uh, somebody in out the, is Sarah. Sarah, no. somebody in the chat is saying that they think the type it's a typo. Yes, it's not true because. Um, I thought it was very fun because all over our trip through Africa, we saw a hair saloons. That's what they call them. They don't call them hair salons. So that was not a typo. And as well with us yeah. is Musa Munyalo. So Musa, would you say hi? Hi, hi everybody. Hi. Hi Musa. So tell us how um, how's the SACO doing? How are, have the new members just gotten their loans yet? Uh, actually, we are uh, we have got a challenge. We've got very many many members joining, and uh, uh, we it's also advantageous is that uh, we shall get many people and many subscribers this will make our circle to move and uh, we are doing pretty well pretty good job starting a very good starting 
we thank all the anonymous donors for the support given during the setup and the, all the sort of hands that is uh, um, associating with the growing the and uh, growing economically to the lives of local Nabugwe people. And uh, here the circle is moving and we are hoping, we are having a number of hopes into to put in the circle and to, to yield from the circle that will, uh, will contribute to the development of our people in Nabugwe and, and the neighbors all over Bali and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. It's, um, it's been such a pleasure to work with you. Um, you're one of the most brightest people I've met. And um, yeah, yeah. Musa has just been impeccable in sharing every part of the project with me. And so I've been able to learn really how to put a SACO together. Um, which has been wonderful for me personally. So um, somebody is asking about the recorded session and it will be available. So Molly has put that in the chat. It will be available online at kulanu.org slash recorded session later today. So I'm gonna um, hand this over to Harriet. Molly, is that recorded session or recorded sessions? I thought it had an S at the end. Um, oh, so both links work, so no problem, you'll get there. <laughs> oh, great, <laughs> that's nice. Um, one moment. Okay, so now we're, we're going to go to the breakout rooms. Uh, we, uh, Molly, um, Joan, you did an amazing job of getting us through all these amazing programs in, in a little over an hour. So we're going to take 15 minutes for breakout rooms and then we'll come back.